Hi, this is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about the setting include AFR target and what to change when going to the dyno. And today we're talking about this piece right here in the red box. For today's purposes, I want you to go to EGO control and turn off the algorithm, basically pick no correction. We also want to go to incorporate AFR, include AFR target, and the stoichiometric setting for gasoline is 14.7, and that's what we'll be using today. Uh, that's all on the general settings tab. So now what I've done is opened up the VE table, which is RPM by KPA in this case, and on the right I've opened up the AFR target table. In all of EFI fuel tuning, what we're doing is essentially determining what is the best average VE to put in the VE table that hits our matching AFR target. For example, right now I'm at 3100 RPM and 70 kPa, and the lookup on the AFR target table at 70 kPa and 3100 again would be 13.5 in this example. So what you do is play around with this number, this 80.6, to get on average, a 13.5 AFR. The devil's in the details in that there's 256 cells looking up maybe 100 cells over here and getting all of this to match. What we would typically do is tune the low power section of our map and possibly the lower RPM section in a parking lot or wherever it is that you could possibly drive the vehicle and slowly use either an auto-tune or by hand tuning and data logging to get the best combination to hit our target AFR. This is fairly daunting uh, when you consider 256 cells and depending on the horsepower of your vehicle, you might be up into two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred horsepower range as you get up into the top right corners. And it's pretty much impossible to do that on these high horsepower cars you probably can't find anywhere to drive them. So eventually you're going to want to go to the dyno. But once you do have this set as close as possible by whatever method you set the VE table, the beauty of using include AFR in our calculation is, for example, if you wanted to try running a little richer from 100 kPa up above, in our case, this is a normally aspirated motor, so we really max out at 100 kPa. But if you wanted to try richer, you could highlight this area by hitting the minus sign at the top, putting in 0.5, and when you hit enter, all of these cells have changed in the red box to 0.5 AFR richer. Then what you can do is by using the blend, you can highlight an area, say, from 60 kPa up to 100. And what this is going to do is the bottom row in the highlighted area and the top row in the highlighted area will not change, but it will blend vertically all the cells between the top and bottom rows. So you can go out, make this change, go drive the car around after it's been fully tuned without ever touching the VE table. And you can see if you like the car, the way it behaves better with a little more fuel. If you might find out that it really doesn't like more fuel, it wants less, you can go in, highlight this area, bring it up numerically, re-blend, and go drive again. Or possibly if you're on the dyno doing your final pulls, which is something I always do once we've tried our target AFR that we think we're going to like, I will later go in and change these numbers just to do a final pull to make sure the motor doesn't respond in a way you never expected. So now let's look at what happens if you turn off or don't include AFR target. What this essentially does is in your basic fueling equation, it sets this entire box to one. So that when it does the math of the VE lookup times the alpha N lookup, so on and so forth, this is essentially ignored. Now what would happen is it does the lookup, but instead of finding the 13.5, it ignores that AFR target table. The problem that comes in is if later you want to try a richer mixture, the only thing you can do is highlight the VE table and try it at 10% richer to see what happens. 
and it gets very confusing as you try different things. So now, let's assume we want to take the car after we've done all this tuning on the bottom end section, and you want to try to dial in the high load area. In this case, it happens to be a normally aspirated motor, so it's 70 kPa to 100 kPa, and all the way through the RPM range. This is the area the dyno operators are very good at hitting a specific cell and getting your VE dialed right in. The problem is, now that you know how all this stuff works, is it gets very confusing for the dyno operator if closed loop is moving numbers around for you in the background. So the way you set this up to go to the dyno is let's go back to our general settings and go back to include AFR target. Also, you want to make sure that the 14.7 storage geometric is correct for your fuel. The other thing I'd like to have you do is since most dyno operators like to hand tune, I want you to go to the EGO control and change it to no correction. We can turn it back on later. Then what you and the dyno operator have to do is agree to what, what target AFR he wants to seek as he's on the dyno. For example, possibly you might want to go from 70 kPa up to 100 kPa and set it to a nice even 13 AFR. He may want to go to some other number, but for example purposes, let's change it to 13. What that'll do is change this entire area to 13 to make it far less confusing as he goes through the volumetric efficiency table, dialing in your high RPM, high power range. I'd like to take a moment to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These guys develop the software I use to tune most of these motors, no matter what system you are on. And feel free to hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.